Hello, I am Jan Oberg. I am the director of the very independent Transnational Foundation for Peace and Future Research in Sweden. And it's a great honor and a pleasure, but also a challenge for me to say a few things about the future of democracy as it could be in the global system. But let me get started. Um, I think it will boost global democracy the day the US empire NATO is gone because it's incompatible with the idea of democracy to have one trying to dominate the rest. S secondly, I think it's reasonable to say in continuation of that, that democracy being based on dialogue, <coughs> conversation and mutual respect is incompatible with nuclearism and militarism because that is based on raw force and not on, exactly on dialogue, so to speak. Uh, three, or C, number C in my preconditions for this proposals I shall make later, I think we should not elevate national democracy mechanisms to the global level. A world government would be a terrible thing, uh, very risky uh, and impossible to uh, select or elect. Uh, D, um, democracy, particularly the, the, the representative democracy is in deep crisis and we need to think of ways in which many more people around the world can be involved in decision making uh, at the level above the nation state or the governments at the moment. I think the best way to discuss these things, the best building blocks or inspiration sources will be new thinking, good ideas, don't kill any good ideas, don't call them unrealistic. And secondly, the United Nations Charter as we know it. Uh, maybe with changes, we will see, but it's still the best document humanity has. And then the um, five principles of peaceful coexistence that we have in the Pan Shield from 1954. So here come some suggestions. First of all, a democratized Security Council uh, with no veto. A people's, a new people's assembly, not consistent of government representatives, but of representatives of citizens around the world. A new environmental security council, a larger role for the general assembly, a stronger collective UN leadership, not one person, but a collectivity representing different areas, and a stronger paragraph or article 99 and 100. Two, I would like to suggest that we have UN embassies in each member state and not only ambassadors to the UN from each member state. It would be a good consultative, corrective uh, dialogue possibility that the United Nations representatives could sit in each country and uh, monitor where the decisions are made according to the charter and according to the decisions and resolutions that have been made. Secondly, or third actually, <laughs> Uh, the UN Charter talks about we the people, but there are no people. There are governments, representatives in that sense, and there are representatives of the people. And some of these governments are non-people's organizations to play on the non-governmental organizations. Uh, and I don't think that we should call citizens non-governmental. In that case, we should call governments non-people's uh, organizations. That is not, neither of is fair. But what we need is representatives of civil society all over the world to um, infuse ideas, solutions, concerns to those who make decisions, a consultative status to, in a completely new way in an assembly of its own. The UN must be sold as a broadcaster. Public, global public education through the UN and new media uh, would be, in my view, a very healthy thing to do. No democracy five is better than each member, uh, citizen or member wants it to make it. And therefore, uh, the same goes with the UN. And therefore, I believe that we should stop criticizing the UN as such, as the UN, and then ask ourselves, are we good enough as member states? Are we really living up to the charter and the decisions made? Or are we actually basically 24 seven ignoring most of what we have signed in the UN? And that would lead to a, <clears throat> if you will, reconsideration of also the budget. The UN must, be, must have a much larger budget, and I'll come back to that. Uh, point six, I believe that young women and men should be able to do service. Instead of military service, do service in, in the UN, 
at various organizations or in or regional organizations such as BRICS or the European Union or whatever we call regional organizations as an alternative, as I said, to military service, that would be more educative and more constructive than learning how to kill. Uh, <clears throat> we must change priorities. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Uh, change priorities in the sense that we spend, at the moment, spend, the countries of the world spend four to five hundred times more on, mili on the military than on the UN. Now, that is simply not viable and is incompatible, as I said before, with democracy. Eight, no democracy can exist if people only demand things. And therefore, I think the human rights is a fine idea. The Declaration of Human Rights is fine, but we need a declaration of human obligations and human duties. And that will turn into also having duties for those yet unborn, because our decisions reach far into the future and we'll have to be lived by, with, by those who are not yet born. So we have to have imagination and think of how will this work? How will our decision work for those who come after us? So that amounts to a new global ethics instead of, you know, the, the traditional neighborhood ethics, because we have now global consequences of decisions we make. I would like also to see nine, the trusteeship council reinvigorated in order to have sanctuaries, if you will, where political and environmental and other conflicts cannot be solved immediately, but you could have that kind of sanctuary until you can find a solution. Now, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I believe that we should have much more direct democracy. You, technically, it must be possible to have vote by your phone or SMS or whatever, of course, in secure manners, uh, of who, for instance, should be your region's leaders. If the European Song Contest, Eurovision Song Contest, can decide which is the best song, I'm sure we could also decide who is the best politicians to lead us. Um, that was not possible before, but with new technology, there are new opportunities to do direct democracy. And I would like to see everybody who re represents my country in an international organization to have been elected through votes and not been selected by the foreign ministry. I'm sure we are now moving into a global... Um, global um, culture, uh, structure, or world order, multipolarity, and all that. I don't have to make it more specific, but the catchword to me is transnational. Transnational in a sense that citizens will transcend and trans go transnational over and below their own states and connect directly through social media and all that, of course, in a new way. And it will also mean much stronger regional organization, less power to the nations, the gov local governments, uh, the state government, national governments, and a much stronger United Nations. So these were 11 points, and you might have find, found some of them idealistic. I don't think they are. The reason is that what we call realism must, by definition, be based on the past and the present. Whereas if we have ideas, if we dialogue about ideas, visions, ideas about the future and what is possible, we have a chance to do something that is absolutely necessary, and that is to move the whole balance between focus on the past and the present into focusing on the future. Not focusing only on what there is, but focusing on what there could be. Thank you very much for your attention.